Hello YouTube, I'm Time Itself. This is a video of Hanoi Domination, and I'd like to share a few thoughts about being aggressive with a submachine gun. The standard disclaimer that I'm not a pro applies, I am pub stomping here, but I have found some things that consistently work for me, and maybe it'll give you some insight into the game. The smart way to play Hanoi is to hold B and C, get the other team stuck out behind A, and get a comfortable 100 point win. However, in this game, I'm with four friends, we feel like pushing the other team around the map, and so this is the part I have to play in that. This makes for a fast-paced game that I think you guys will enjoy watching. So let me talk about the gun I'm using while I get a few stupid deaths out of the way. One of the main differences of submachine guns from assault rifles is the tight spread on the hip fire. Even as inconsistent as knifing is, if you're within knife range, hip fire is not a good counter, even if you know the guy's coming. Right, two, right, coming two, to see from the out, from around the back side. So avoid knife fights, unless you can just stab the guy in the back. The Mac 11 is one of the many 20 to 30 damage submachine guns, and it shares a damage profile with all of the others. On silence, the damage starts to drop off around 20 meters, the same distance the hip fire aim assist ends. At 25 meters, the damage reaches its minimum of 20, and the ADS aim assist no longer takes effect. With a silencer, the damage drop off happens between roughly 8 and 18 meters. The Mac 11 shares the same high fire rate as many of the other guns in the game, including the AUG, the FAMAS, and the STONER. The recoil has the same tendency as the FAMAS to push the gun up and to the right, but it has a slightly tighter spread than the FAMAS. But the AUG and the FAMAS are 25 to 35 damage guns, and I don't find the improved hip fire of the submachine guns to make me want to charge in and take a fight head on like I might with a shotgun. So instead, I like to rely on the submachine gun's other main difference, increased mobility. I'm not just looking to get close, I'm looking to flank them, even get behind them, so that they don't even fire a shot back. Of course, that is much easier said than done. I should also note that the 20 round submachine guns are pretty much exclusively in extended mags with scavenger thing for me. But I can also use the steady supply of concussion grenades scavenger pro is giving me to snare enemies and get them stuck looking in the wrong direction. Okay, pretty easy so far, so let's talk about a good flanking situation and how the timing should work. The best way I can explain this is to compare anticipating being in a gunfight and being in a gunfight to being under the effects of a concussion grenade. People stop sprinting, they look in one direction, and they get so focused on the crosshairs that they don't pay attention to the minimap. So ideally, the flanking maneuver will start when the enemies are beginning to anticipate getting in a gunfight, and you'll arrive just before that gunfight happens face to face. Yet the poor guy's stuck in a losing situation. It's two on one. Either way, he's dead. Get these guys looking at this door, gives me enough time to get around and get another concussion grenade through the window. They think they're in a gunfight, they're really just waiting to die. I'll lead with the concussion grenade to give myself the advantage coming around this corner. The second guy is already in a gunfight with my teammates, he's an easy kill for me. So I'm running around the map like a madman, but I'm not crazy. I'm relying on my teammates to help set up situations that I can win. And if my teammates find themselves in trouble, they just need to stay alive for a little bit longer to give me time to finish flanking the enemies and give them support. So obviously, with all the sprinting around, if an enemy is covering a route that I'm trying to use, I'm probably just going to be an easy kill for them. So sometimes a small amount of caution or restraint is appropriate. And oftentimes, when you round the final corner to see your teammates face to face, they'll start shooting at you. Be sure to say something friendly Hi guys. so that they don't think you're offended. Howdy. I ran this class with Warlord and used a silencer as my second attachment for a while. It worked out okay, but I had a really hard time killing any more than two people with a single clip from this gun. So, given the playstyle that I want to use with this gun and the kinds of situations that's going to put me in, going with extended mag, scavenger, and sleight of hand really makes sense. This class dictates largely how I try to get around the map and how I try to work with my teammates. I'm looking to spend a lot of time sprinting, so knowing where it's safe to sprint and where danger may be around the next corner is really important. Yeah, just generally navigating the map is important, but doing so within the context of where my teammates are, that's what really does it. Now here we're aware the spawn is switched over, they're going to be on C. My teammates are still cleaning them up over at A and B, and I'm over here on my own. I'm not going to be able to stop C on my own, it's probably just going to get me killed. So instead I'm going to pick off the straggler as an easy kill, keep him from being a nuisance as my team is trying to get to C, and make him spawn back at C with his team, we can just go ahead and kill him again when he's over there. 
I don't lead this corner with a stun. I assume they don't know I'm back here, and throwing a stun probably wouldn't hit anyone. More likely it would just alert them that I'm going to be coming that way. Here I'm going to have a choice between targets on the left and right. And I'm going to take the one on the left because he's going to be in a firefight with my teammate. The worst thing that could happen is he kills one of us. He still dies, and then one of us is still left over to get the guy in A. If we split up, both of us could lose our fights. It's not kill stealing, it's teamwork. Again, I'm going to have a choice between taking targets on the left or the right. I'm going to take the one on the left because my teammate over in A is already fighting a guy and this guy's coming up behind him. I need to kill him. Well, that, and I also like shooting people in the back. I did pass up an opportunity to save C. It's not a big deal. We were triple capping them. We've got a healthy lead and we'll just get some more points for recapturing it. And that guy. I assumed that he was going away from the point, but I guess he heard the announcer say he was losing C and he turned back around. I should have realized that my teammate was on C and that the announcer would probably call that out to the other team. But of course the announcer doesn't always call out the points and he's often late. So if you notice that a point's about to get taken, go ahead and call it out to your team. You might be able to put a napalm strike or something on it. Or just a nice salvo of Semtex. They got me at B, there's lots of them on it. So it's all about getting the unfair gunfights. Any way you can make it unfair. In this case, I'm looking to use my team to make those gunfights unfair. It's not as critical to avoid dying, but map control, and in a game like this one, momentum is really important. So not only is it enjoyable playing with friends, but playing as a team opens up some fun options. And the game can turn from more of a free-for-all into an actual team game. Alright, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment or press that like button down there. And let's finish this thing in style. <laughs> I was watching that job. Oh wow, oh, wow. No, 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 yeah, there was two of us on the other side there. I'm glad we could set that up for you, Zach. Thank that you, guys. Great. That was a fun one.